part one, I broke it into a couple parts. It's on related rates. So this is a really, really important concept on the AP exam. There is always one free response question on related rates, so you have to know this. Um, so it's involving story problems. I know that's your fave. But uh, you're just going to use, you're going to set up an equation like A equals pi r squared or volume equals um, length times width times height or something like that. So you're going to set up an equation. It does not have to be one variable like optimization. It can be multiple variables. Okay, so it says draw a sketch, set up an equation relating all relevant quantities, and use variables that make sense like A is area, length is L. Um, differenti differentiate implicitly. Do you guys remember implicitly? So basically whenever we had a y term, we tacked on a dy when we took the derivative. Same thing, but now it's with respect to time. So for example, you might have something like dx over dt or dA over dt or whatever. Okay, substitute in values, so substitute in numbers after you've taken the derivative. Why would I not substitute a number in before and then take the derivative? Like, put your computer away. Why would I not plug a number in and then take the derivative? Yeah, you basically plug it in like the derivative equation. Because if you plug it in before and then take the derivative, you're going to get zero, right? Does that make sense? You don't want to plug numbers in and then take the derivative. Okay, um, so always after you take the derivative and then solve for the remaining rate. So eventually we are going to talk about instances where you can plug numbers in, but we're not going to do that for this part one. Okay, so it says, number one, an oil tanker has an accident on a bridge and oil spills out at a rate of 20 cubic feet per minute. So when I see that, I immediately think, oh, that's the rate of change of the volume with respect to time. Do you guys see that that's dv over dt? Volume is cubic feet, time is minutes. Okay, as Mr. Crowley says, units are the key to life. He always says that. That is especially true when you're dealing with related rates. So it says, suppose that the oil spreads out onto the water in a circle in a thickness of 1 over 10, so a tenth of an inch. Now, we've already talked about feet so far, so I went ahead and I did that conversion for you. So it's really 1 over 120 for a foot. So determine the rate at which the radius of the spill is increasing when the radius equals 500 feet. Okay, so we have oil that's um, spreading out, and it is kind of a circular shape. But I also mentioned another thing. I said it, that there was a thickness to it. Okay, so there's a certain thickness to the oil. Okay, so the shape is actually a cylinder. We're talking about the volume. It's not the area of a circle, it's the volume of a cylinder. So the volume of a cylinder is the area of the base times the height. So it's a circular base, so pi r squared h. Okay, so we're going to take the derivative implicitly. We're going to take the derivative of r's, we're going to take the derivative of h's, and so on. So I'm going to have dv over dt equals, and I'm going to break this apart. So I'm going to have derivative of pi r squared is going to be uh, 2 pi r dr over dt, and then times h, plus pi r squared stays how it is, and now the derivative of h is 1 dh over dt. You don't have to write the 1 if you don't want to. Do you understand that setup? So I took the derivative of everything with respect to time. So that means all of these things are like, if I have a dr over t, dt, that's going to be something that is feet per minute. Okay. So now that I've taken the derivative, now I can plug in values. So we're saying, at this particular instant, the radius is 500 feet. Now the radius has been changing the whole time, right? This oil is spreading out on the water. That's why I can't plug it in yet. Okay, so I have to take the derivative first because it's like, wait, do I plug in r equals 1, r equals 2, whatever? It's changing. So whenever something's changing, you have to wait to plug it in. So you have dv over dt um, is 20. So I have 2 pi r is 500. dr over dt is what we're trying to find because it said determine the rate at which the radius of the spill is increasing. And then my h is 1 over 120. Is dr is the radius or like the... It's the rate of change of the radius with respect to... Okay, so then I have pi times 500 squared times 1, and then my dh over dt, that's your thickness. Okay, that's the rate of change of the height. What is that in this example? Is the height changing? No. So it's not changing by any feet per minute, right? So it's zero. So the reason was because 
DH over U was constant. Uh, it actually, like, sometimes it does, but no, I, I don't think oil actually does because it doesn't like, I don't know, it's kind of weird. I don't know exactly how oil works, but in this problem it is not. I know, we'll have to ask uh, some science teachers, but I would think the oil and the water aren't mixing, right? But I do know, like in that big oil spill in like 2000, when was that, 2010, uh, there was oil that was underneath the water, right? So it must be able to go through, right? All right, so anyway, so I need to solve for my one variable that I don't know the dr of yeah, You better believe there was a lot of calculus that was going into figuring out that oil spill. All right, luckily, this whole side was multiplied by zero, so it's all gone. It's like that whole pi 500 squared times 1 times 0. Okay, so if I'm solving for dr over dt, you have to be very careful, mm -hmm. one thing at a time. So we're going to have 20. And I'm going to multiply the one, 120 over, so I'm going to have 20 times 120. And then I'm going to start dividing by things. So now I'm going to divide by the 2 pi and divide by the 500. So you can combine them and have 1,000 pi, or you can do it like that. So when you are putting this into your calculator, you are going to make sure that you put parentheses there. Right? If you don't, you will have major problems. Like some of you that did your optimization of the can realized that you had the wrong thing because you forgot parentheses and had like 10 over 2 pi and didn't put parentheses in the calculator. Oh man, it's rough. Now you guys are like, what? <laughs> that group figured it out. They fixed it. All right, so let's do that. So we're going to do 20 times 120 and then divide by parentheses 2 pi times 500. Okay, that's all going to equal dr over dt. So dr over dt is equal to 0.764, um, and my units, it's a radius, the rate of change is the radius with respect to time, so it should be feet per minute. Does that make sense? Radius is a length divided by minutes. All right, sometimes people leave the pi in the answer, that's fine. If you did that, you'd have 20 times 120 divided by 1,000. You could also have, like, 12 over 5 pi. That's also an acceptable answer. Doesn't matter. Okay. All right, next up. Okay, so a ladder problem. So it says a 10-foot ladder leans against the side of a building. So here's the building. And here's the ground. Okay, if the top of the ladder begins to slide down the wall, so here's my ladder, and the top is sliding down, the wall at a rate of two feet per second. How fast is the bottom of the ladder sliding away? So you would think that it's exactly the same. It's actually not. Like you would think, oh, if it's going to slide down at a rate of two feet per second, it's going to slide out at a rate of two feet per second. But it doesn't because like gravity is pulling it down. Okay, so it's it ends up not being kind of the same. Okay, so it says how fast is the bottom of the ladder sliding away from the wall when the top of the ladder is eight feet off the ground? Okay, so I usually label my ladder problems with x and y, right? x is my horizontal, y is my vertical. And then I label my ladder as z. So I need to think of some kind of equation that's going to relate my x, my y, and my z. x squared plus equals z squared, right? x squared plus y squared equals z squared. It relates the three items. Okay, and I'm going to take the derivative. So I'm going to have 2x and dx over dt plus 2y dy over dt plus 2z dz over dt. So all of them are, are with respect to time. So previously we didn't tack on like a dx over dx, right, because that was always just one. But in this case it's dx over dt. All right, and you can divide by 2 on each side if you want to. So basically all the 2s go away. Divide by 2. Okay, so let's think about each of these. Yeah. How can you take a derivative? It has to be in regards to um, Because it's always a rate. So when you take a derivative, it has to be in regards to something because there's always a denominator. It's always like, like even slope. It's change in y over change in x, right? So you should always have some kind of derivatives are rates. That's why they're so important because everything in life has some kind of rate with it, right? Think about all the rates that you see every day. All right, so 
this is why I should tell Mr. Morrison this. Mr. Morrison and I always have debates on which is more important to take in high school, AP Calc or AP Stats. So we fight about this constantly. Obviously, AP Calc, right? Rates are all around us. So are stats, though, right? I don't know. So I think it's calculus. <laughs> it might be good for journalism. That kind of stuff. All right, so anyway, so let's figure out what d these different things are. Do we know x, y, and z? Like, we said x is equal to, uh, we don't know, right? We said, did say uh, the z ladder is 10 feet tall. Did we say when, what the height was for y? Yeah, we said it was when it was 8 feet off the ground. So we don't know x. What do I have to do to find x? Pythagorean theorem to find x, right? So I have 8, 10, and x. So I can do Pythagorean theorem, or I can recognize it as a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Do you guys see it? Do you guys know right away that it's 6? Yeah, so it's 6. So you can do 8 squared plus x squared equals 10 squared if you want. But it's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. It's in that ratio. Okay, so we're going to plug in. So x is 6. My dx over dt is what I'm trying to find. It says how fast is the bottom of the ladder sliding away from the wall. My y is 8. Now, my dy over dt, I, I wrote 2 feet per second over there, but I'm not gaining 2 feet every second. What's happening to my length of y? Every second, I'm losing 2 feet. So I should actually make this negative 2 feet per second. So I have a negative 2 equals z, which is 10, and then I have dz over dt. Is the length of the ladder changing? Is that length increasing or decreasing? No, unless you have one of those crazy ladders that it actually happens. <laughs> it expands, right? Um, it's not. It's, this ladder is a constant 10 feet. So dz over dt is equal to 0. It's a constant length. So I have times 0. So we just solve it out. So a lot of times there will be a 0, but not all of them. Okay, so I add my 16 over, I divide by 6, so 16 over 6, so 8 over 3, so what is that, like 2.67 repeating, or 676 6 repeating, I mean, 2.667, uh, and this is in feet per second. Okay, that's your answer. So you can leave it as a fraction or you can write the decimal form, it doesn't matter. Okay, feeling okay about related rates? Not terrible. All right, next up. Okay, a snowball. So it says if a snowball melts so that its surface area decreases at a rate of one square centimeter per minute, find the rate at which the diameter decreases when the diameter is 10 centimeters. Okay, so we have a lot of information going on here. So we talk about the surface area of a, of a snowball. So the surface area of a snowball, do you guys know the surface area of a sphere? <laughs> no one? Nope, that's the cube, that's the uh, volume. So 4 pi r squared. It's actually the derivative of the volume equation. Your volume equation is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Do you guys see how the derivative is the surface area? I know. Calculus does that to you. It's like, oh my god, everything's just the derivative. Crazy. Uh, if you know the volume equation, you know the surface area. I know, but which did they find first? I don't know. Good question. Uh, what one would they have found first? I don't know. What came first? What came first? The chicken or the egg? I don't know. I'll have to think about it. All right. Anyway, so we have surface area equals 4 pi r squared. And it's decreasing at a rate of one square centimeter, shh, guys, per minute. So that's the ds over dt is decreasing. So I'm going to do negative one uh, centimeter squared per minute. Okay, so I know that. Find the rate at which the diameter decreases. Now, notice it's asking for diameter, and my equation doesn't even involve diameter. Okay, can you get it involved di to involve diameter? Yeah. We know what the radius is, right? The radius is really just the diameter divided by 2, so I'm going to replace it. So I'm going to say 4 pi times the diameter over 2 squared. So I get 4 pi times d squared over 4, which is really pi
pi d squared. That's another way of writing the surface area equation for a sphere, pi d squared. Now we can take the derivative. So when I take the derivative, I get ds over dt equals 2 pi d dd over dt. I love d. dd over dt. Now we can find it. So we can plug in. So we have to find the right rate at which the diameter decreases when the diameter is 10. So we're going to plug in 10. We're finding dd over dt. And we know ds over dt is negative 1. So we get negative 1 over 20 pi when we divide it over. So if you want an approximation for that, you can always do it. Just make sure you put parentheses around the 20 pi. So you would get negative 0 0.016 centimeters. So what, is, what do I put for my units? Diameter over time. So centimeters per minute. Now let's say that you guys uh, didn't realize that you had to solve for diameter. This is the reason that we call this related rates. Okay. If you had started here, so you don't have to write this, just kind of pay attention. If you had started with five, 4 pi r squared and you just went ahead and took the derivative and you're just kind of doing your thing and you're like, oh, I got 8 pi r dr over dt. And then you actually look at the information that your problem has and you're like, oh, crap, I want a diameter. I have radius. It's fine. Because your radius, like you know the radius, when, if your diameter is 10, your radius is 5, right? But then you're like, oh, but I need dr over dt. How do I... How do I find dr over dt? You write a second equation. You relate radius to diameter. The radius, like 2 times the radius, gives you the diameter, right? So when you take the derivative of that equation, 2 dr over dt is equal to dd over dt. The rates are related to each other. That's why you call it related rates. Does that make sense? So then if you want dr over or if you wanted dd over dt, you can just say, oh, well, that's just going to be 1 half of dd over dt. Right, you can divide the two over and then plug it in. So if you're doing the problem and you realize, oh my gosh, I just totally took the derivative, especially if you have really, really long derivatives and you're like, I just took that derivative and I didn't even need that. I should have found length or I should have found width or whatever. You can always relate the items. Okay, so next up, forest fire. So a forest fire spreads in a circle with a radius changing at a rate of five feet per minute. So it's a circle. Your radius is increasing 5 feet every single minute. When the radius reaches 200 feet, at what rate is the area of the burning region increasing? So this is just a circle. It's A equals pi R squared. So when I take the derivative, dA over, D, dA over dt, I get 2 pi R, another way that derivatives are related, right? Pi R squared and 2 pi R. You're like, man, everything is related. Okay, times... Um, dr over dt. So we get uh, dA over dt is equal to 2 pi times 200 feet times dr over dt is 5 feet per minute. You're increasing 5 feet every minute. So you just multiply it out. So 2,000 pi. What would your units be in this case? Definitely going to be over minutes, but what's on top? B squared, right? Because it's an area. So always look at what you're finding. Rate of change of area with respect to time. So you can leave it like that, or you can find the decimal. It doesn't matter. Okay. So at noon, ship A is 100 kilometers west of ship B. So A is west of B. Ship A is sailing south. Ship B is sailing north. How fast is the distance between the two ships changing? So what you're finding is this distance right here, D. A little bit harder, right? Are you like, oh my gosh, what's going on? All right, this is kind of like vectors in like physics class and things. You can kind of move things around. Like this amount here, the dB over dt, the amount that the B is changing, you can just move it over here. It makes it a lot easier. Okay, so this whole distance, like if you add up the 
how quickly A is sailing south and how quickly B is sailing north, they're separating vertically by, by what rate? Like, what rate are they separating? Do you guys see what I'm saying? So, like, this one is going up at 25 kilometers per hour, and this one's going down at 35 kilometers per hour. So, vertically, their distance is changing by what? 60 kilometers per hour. Okay, horizontally, how is their distance changing? It's not changing at all, is it? Right? There's still that separate, there's still, um, separated by the same horizontal distance. So we have a triangle. Maybe I'll draw it over here so it's a little bit cleaner. We have um, x, y, and z again. So I'll call this d for distance. And we have x and we have y. And we know that dy over dt is increasing by 60 kilometers per hour. And dx over dt is what? Zero. Zero. It's constant. OK. It's saying at 4 p.m. what's happening. So we started at noon, so we've traveled for four hours. Okay, so this, the, the one that's going down, right, ship A, was going downwards 35 kilometers each hour. So how far has it moved in four hours? 35 times 2 is 70, times 2 again, 140, right? So it's 140, so this one's 140. And then what about X? They were 100 kilometers apart, right? So that's 100. So you can find D at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, did I not do that? No, we did, I think. No, no, we didn't. We were right. Darn, Abby got a point. I've gotten several points today. Yeah. All right, Abby got that one. Okay, so. Um, y is going to be, yeah, she's saying it's both of the distances, right? It's A and B. So I only did one of them. I did the 35. So let's do the 60 kilometers per hour. After four hours, that whole thing's 60 kilometers each hour. So it's going to be 240. Do you guys see it? So we're going to have 240. And we're going to have 100. So at that point in time, I can find how, how much the ships are separated. Right? If I do the Pythagorean theorem, I get 260 there. But that's not what the question was saying. It wasn't saying... What is the distance between the two ships? It was saying, find the rate of change of the distance of the two, two ships. So we have that. So we say um, x squared plus y squared equals d squared. We take the derivative. We can divide by 2, so the 2s will all go away. And then we can plug in. So if I plug in x is 100, and dx over dt is 0, and I plug in y is 240, and dy over dt is 60, and then I plug in 260, I can find dd over dt. So 240 times 60, and then divide by the 260. So you get 55.385 kilometers per hour. That's your answer. Okay, so it's a little bit different. You had to think about um, making it into a shape that made sense, right? Making it into that right triangle. Can you zoom in? Zoom in on what part? I don't know if I can zoom in. <laughs> I have a, I don't have a map here. This is a old school. Maybe peek at the people next to you. All right. Are right, you understanding? You're going to try the next one? Try to set it up? <laughs> yeah, I guess I can zoom in a little bit. Let me try this one. All right. Oops. I'm trying to draw here. All right, so anyway, so an inverted, inverted conical tank, so a cone with its vertex down. So this looks like this. We'll hear that a lot, inverted conical tank, inverted cone, uh, is leaking at a rate of 6 cubic inches per minute. So that's going to be your dB over dt. But make sure if it's leaking out, you're losing a volume every minute, right? So it's negative 6. The height of the cone is 12 inches. 
and the radius along the top is 15. I'll clearly have drawn this to scale. <laughs> it's a much wider cone. That's all right. We'll go with it. All right, so find the rate, rate of change of the radius when the height of the water is 8 inches. Okay, so we talked before, calculus is kind of the culmination of all the classes that you've learned so far, all of the math classes. So this is a geometry one. It's going to involve some geometry. <laughs> I love how enthusiastic you guys are. All right, so what's happening is as the water is dripping out, you have another triangle of water. So this triangle down here. Those two triangles are related to each other. So you have one big triangle, which was 15 and 12. And then you have one little triangle, which is something and something else. So it's going to be like the radius of the water and the height of the water. Okay. Like, what does this create? It's not a trapezoid now. <laughs> well, I guess a trapezoid of the space that's now in water. It creates two triangles, and those triangles are similar to each other. Have you, do you guys remember similar triangles? <laughs> no, not an octagon. Yes. You don't remember anything about similar triangles? Fifteen over twelve equals r over h. Right. You would exactly do that. Fifteen over twelve equals r over h. So we write that up here. So fifteen over twelve equals r over h. So whenever you have an inverted cone, you should think similar triangles. They will almost always use similar triangles. Same with the shadow problems that we're going to do. Shadows. All right, so similar triangles. So it says, uh, find the rate of change of the radius when the height of the water is 8 inches. OK, so if I was setting up a volume equation for a cone, do you guys remember a cone is 1 third area of the base times the height? <laughs> so it's all like volume is almost always area of the base times the height or one third the area of the base times the height. One third means it goes to a point. Like it's a cone or a pyramid or something like that. So it's one third, the area of the base is pi r squared, and the height is h. Okay. You can make this problem super hard if you take the derivative now. If you take the derivative now, you have the product rule, right? You're gonna have dr over dt, you're gonna have dh over dt, you're gonna have all of that stuff. But you don't have to do that. You can make it easier on yourself every single time with these problems. OK, so you're going to use a similar triangle to help you. You have this. You can say that 15h is equal to 12r, right? And you could even relate their rates. You could say 15dr over dt has to equal 12d, d, uh, hang on, 15dh over dt equals 12dr over dt. Do you see what I'm saying? So you could find their rates and relate them to each other. So you could take the derivatives and so on and plug in. Yes? No, because we can't plug anything in yet. The R and the H are changing. OK, so you could, you could take the derivatives and have dr over dt and dh over dt, and then you can relate them to each other and work through the problem that way. OK, but we don't want to do that. We will always want to make these problems easier on ourselves. Do I want R's or do I want H's? If I could eliminate one, what one would I want to keep? Why do I want to keep an H? Because it's squared. It's not squared, but it's also, that's what I know. The height of the water is 8 inches. That's the thing that I know that I can plug in later. Okay, so I want to change them all to H, if possible. So I'm going to replace this R with something in terms of H. Do you see it? R is equal to what? 15h over 12, and 15 over 12 reduces down, right? So 15 divided by 12, you divide by 3 on the top and the bottom, so you get 5 over 4, h equals r. So I plug in. So I have 1 third pi, 5 over 4, h squared times h. So it's a little messy along the way, but the derivative is going to be so much easier. So I'm going to square my 5 over 4h, so I'm going to have 1 third pi times 25 over 16h squared times h. So my volume equation is, let's see, 1 times 25 over 3 times 16, so 48 pi h cubed. You 
You with me? Now can you take the derivative? Yeah. yeah. It's much easier. So dv over dt then is, I'm just going to leave the 25 over 48 out front, and then I'm going to say times pi, or, well, I'll do 3. So I'll put the pi that pi with it, and then I'm going to do 3h squared dh over dt. I'll give you guys very much room for this problem, did I? <laughs> Yep, so you can reduce out the 3 and the 48 and get 16 if you want. So 3 and 48 reduce out to give you 16. And now you're ready to plug in. So dv over dt is negative 6. You have 25 over 16 pi, because I canceled the 3 and the, six, the three and the 48 and left 1 over 16. All right, and then h, we're saying when the height is 8, so 8 squared, dh over dt. Uh, that was the volume. Yeah. So I'm going to have negative 6. I'm going to multiply the 16 over. I'm going to divide by 25. I'm going to divide by 8 squared, which is 64. So I think you get negative 3 over 50 pi if you divide everything over. So if you wanted to see what that is as a decimal, it's like negative point zero one nine. Let me do that. And then always put units. This is where you get like one point for units every single time. It's nice. So if you plug in your units, um, you get what is this height per, uh, per time? So inches per minute. Making sense? All right, same idea. Next one, a little bit harder. <laughs> because we're good with related rates at the beginning, you're like, oh, this is easy. It does start out pretty easy. That's why I have this broken into like two days, because it can be kind of hard. But some of them are pretty easy. I mean, they're not bad. All right, so water is uh, leaking out of an inverted conical tank at a rate of uh, 6,000 cubic meters per minute, or cubic centimeters per minute. Guys, so we have our inverted tank again. So we're probably going to use similar triangles again. So it's leaking out at this rate, at the same time that water is being pumped in at a constant rate. So we have some, some coming out and some coming in. So I'm going to say volume out. That's going to be negative 6,000. I'm losing 6,000. And then the volume in, we don't know. Okay. The tank has a height of 6 centimeters, 600 centimeters, and a diameter at the top is 600. Who is it that's 600? I don't know. Why? Why not? <laughs> uh, like every funnel that you use is a cone that has liquid coming out of it. So a lot of people use funnels. <laughs> Pretty important. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so the tank has a height of 600 centimeters and the diameter of the top is 600. Okay. If the water level is rising at a rate of 29 centimeters per minute, so d h over dt is 29 when the height of the water is 150. Find the rate at which the water is being pumped into the tank in cubic centimeters per minute. It's a lot. There's a lot of things happening here. When I first tried this problem, I was like, wait, this is a lot. I had to like really think about it. Okay. So we have the volume coming out, we have the volume coming in at the same time. That's creating our total change in volume. So let's talk about the total change in the volume. So my volume equation of a cone is going to be one-third pi r squared h. And I want to simplify it for myself. If I can only have like just r or just h, it will be a lot easier. So in this case, I have when the height, right, I have dh over dt, I have everything that involves h. 
So if I can change it to H's, it will be much easier. Okay, the derivative step will be just cleaner. Okay, so in this case, it's very, very nice because you have R. Oh, I guess it's not as super nice. I was thinking it was going to be really good. So as you have your water, you have the radius of the water. I shouldn't draw it at the top. Your radius of your water and your height of the water. So R and you have H. So R over H is in the ratio 300 over 600 from your similar triangles. So R over H equals 1 half. So 2R equals H. Mm -hmm. I took half of 600 because I had the diameter of 600. So in other words, H is equal to R over 2. So I'm going to replace, oh, I guess I don't need that, do I? I need to replace, not H. R is equal to H over 2. I need to replace this R here with H over 2. I need everything in terms of H if possible. So I'm going to do that. So I have 1 third pi H over 2 squared times H. So I have 1 third pi times H squared over 4 times H. So I get pi over 12 is my constant out front. And then I have H cubed. Much easier, right? I don't have to do product rule. It's not going to be really messy. Okay, now I take the derivative dB over dt. So I get pi over 12 is still out front, and when I take the derivative of h cubed, I have 3h squared dh over dt. Okay, and I found d, or I knew what dh over dt is, so I have dv over dt is what I'm trying to find equals pi over 12 times 3 times 150 squared times dh over dt is 29. That's a 150 in there. It's kind of messy. So 150 squared times 3 times 29 divided by 12. It's a big one. 163125 pi. So 163,125 pi. Okay, that's the rate of change of the volume. Okay, now this is almost what I wanted, but not quite. Okay, so it's find the rate at which the water is being pumped into the tank. What I just found was the volume total, like the change in volume total. Okay, so that's involving the water coming out, and it's involving the water coming in. Okay, so if I want to talk about uh, the dB over dt, that's the total amount. It's equal to the dV over dt out, right, right, which is negative. I don't know if I should make it negative. I don't know if that's confusing to you guys or not. Um, and then it's also the amount coming in, right? So plus dV over dt n. So negative. Does it make sense? So I have a negative number plus a positive number. It's ending up being positive. So there's clearly much more going in than there is coming out. Do you see what I'm saying? Because the water level is rising. So um, I have negative 6,000 plus the amount coming in, and that's equaling the total of 163,125 pi. So your amount coming in is that number that we found plus 6,000. Does that make sense to you intuitively? Why is it plus 6,000? Because you have to undo what it's like leaving, right? So we just found the total change in the volume. But we have some coming out, so we really had 6,000 more that was coming in. All right, so that's your answer. So 163125 pi plus 6,000. And it's cubic centimeters per minute. Looks like a ton, but it's cubic centimeters. It's not huge. <laughs> now, if that was meters, that's a big cone. Much larger than a funnel. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm going to pass out your homework.